Yo, what is up guys? So this is just a quick update video on my Pocky Ninja Farm macro I have created a few months ago. Uh, K Fabri reached out to me via email uh, saying that he was attempting to I used the bot, but it wasn't working for, for him. So I checked it out and it turns out they have updated the source for some images they use in the game. And I have I have just updated the source for the images I use in my bot and it's working 100%. I have uploaded it to GitHub. Uh, so if you want to test it out for yourself, you have a few options. The first and easiest, you can just go to the description down below, uh, download the executable file I'm providing uh, via a Google Drive shared folder and run on any, any Windows machine and it will work out of the box. No need to install anything, okay? If you are a security concern and you want to generate it for yourself, you can clone this repo and generate it. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. If you don't want to uh, learn how to do that, uh, you can just skip uh, the video and uh, watch how the bot works and test it for yourself, okay? So now I'm gonna show you how to generate your own uh, executable uh, that you can share with your friends uh, and you know what's going on on the background because you have access to the source code. Uh, but keep in mind, if you wanna do this procedure, in the computer you're doing it, you need to have Python installed and you need to have the dependencies installed. But after you've generated the binary, you can share the binary and anyone can just use it uh, without any problems, okay? So let's go. So first thing you wanna do is create a new folder somewhere in your computer. So Pocky, I'll call it Pocky Ninja Bot. And open this folder, we're gonna open the terminal or you can also open a git bash. So you need to have git installed. You're gonna copy the repo link and you're gonna do a git clone. Sorry, you're gonna do a git clone and paste uh, my repo link. You, you're gonna see here that you a new folder uh, will show within that repository or within that folder and you can open it, close this terminal, open a new terminal within this folder. So now you have this uh, txt here, open this text file and run uh, each of these commands. So I'm gonna explain what uh, each of these commands are doing. So this first command is gonna create a virtual environment called vmv and essentially it's creating a new Python environment completely, uh, completely isolated from your local installation. So you can only install things related to your application and make it a, lo a lot lighter and not mess with your local Python, Python installation. Next up, we're gonna activate this virtual environment. So this is essentially uh, ensuring that everything we do from now on will only affect our virtual environment we have just created. Uh, and you can check it if it worked, uh, if you have VMV in, in front of your path here. Uh, now we're gonna install the libraries we use in, in the script. So the first library is Playwright. This is essentially really similar to Selenium. Uh, this is a browser driver that you use to control your, brows your browser via the elements in the page, via the elements in the DOM. And we also, installing PyInstaller. Uh, this library will help us to generate our standalone executable file. Next up, we're gonna install uh, PyQt5. This library is, on, is only used to generate our user interface. This next line here uh, is set play write browsers path equals zero. So this is essentially ensuring that once this is set, uh, once we run the next line where we're actually installing the browser, so we're gonna install Chromium, this browser will be installed inside our virtual environment uh, otherwise, it would be installed in our local path, uh, in, in our local Python installation. So that's not what we want. We want this browser inside the virtual environment, okay? And then uh, you just need to wait for this browser to be installed. And next, we're gonna run this line here. So we're essentially gonna create our uh, our executable. So this is this is gonna call PyInstaller, and we're gonna create the executable via uh, from the from the main uh, file. It's gonna create uh, the, the executable with all the dependencies installed within that binary and we're gonna need to pass this argument here, uh, add data, and inform the driver path. So if we don't do this, uh, our executable will not be able to open the browser and control the browser properly. So we're, we're essentially passing the browser uh, driver path that is inside our virtual environment. So it actually installs this, this browser driver inside our executable. So now just run this command and it's gonna start creating a bunch of stuff. This might take a while, so just hang on a little bit, be patient. and. As you can see here, it has created this main.spec file, also has created this uh, dist folder uh, where our executable will show up very soon, and also this build folder with this main folder and a bunch of other files. Uh, these are not important for us because we're only caring about uh, the executable inside this uh, dist folder. So after the uh, creation of our binary is done, we can delete every single file that is not our executable. Once you read here in your terminal, 
uh, exe completed successfully, you can come here into your uh, disk folder. You can uh, cut it, paste it somewhere else. You can change the name, for, for example, Pocky Ninja Bot Farm. This will not uh, harm the application. You can delete every other file that has been created. Main.spec, you can delete this disk folder that is empty, and you can delete this whole build.main folder. And leave the rest as it is. You can now close this window, and you can test your application now. So just double click it. And this is essentially the application you're going to share with your friends. You, you can just send this executable to someone that has a Windows PC and does not have uh, Python installed. And they can run this, and it will work on their machine. Okay, So this will work on any Windows machine. Uh, and it doesn't need anything to be installed before it runs properly. Okay, So now we've run it. You can see here we have a terminal, and we have this interface. So uh, as shown in the previous video, I'm also going to leave the link uh, in the description if you want to watch it, because there I will go a little bit more in-depth on how uh, you can uh, how, how the bot works. Uh, now I'm just going to showcase it's actually working. So uh, you have Val Valhalla farm. Uh, this is a dungeon type farm. It's melting mountains. It's just some regular mobs in a specific area. So let's go for Valhalla farm. Let's log in into our, into our account. Um, you can set the dungeon level. It only has level 11, level 16 currently, but it's easy to implement the other ones. And you can choose headless or not. If you choose headless, the browser will not pop up, uh, and you will only have the feedback from the, uh, from the terminal. But I, I like to see the browser running. And uh, once you click start, it's going to check your credentials. So it's going to attempt to log in with your credentials. And if it's successful, it's going to tell you that uh, the credentials are valid and it effectively start the bot. Uh, if it doesn't log in correctly, uh, your credentials are not valid, and you have to re-enter your credentials. So now valid credentials, starting bot. You just click OK. The browser will pop up. And effectively, we're going to start farming our uh, Valhalla uh, level 11 dungeon here. So it's going to open uh, the level 11 area, open the dungeon, open the first fight, and start the bot. This is, uh, in simple terms, this is essentially just refreshing the page uh, until we have everything completed and we have access to our cards. <coughs> and after you collect the cards, uh, it's going to restart uh, the farm in a new instance. And you can essentially uh, leave it running uh, forever. And as long as the server is not down or uh, your PC is not down, if any error occurs inside here, it's going to restart the browser and restart uh, the farm. And you can click here on Stop and wait until the, the current run is finished. Or if you actually want to queue the instance, you can just close the browser and close the application and restart everything from scratch. Okay. So now, as you can see in the background, we, are, we already have access to the cards. And you, it's going to collect the cards. Uh, and essentially uh, redo all the process until you tell it to stop. OK, so it's going to reopen level 11 dungeon and farm everything once again. So level 11 is working properly. Let's close it and showcase level 16, OK? Uh, my account, this account, is not strong enough for level 16. So what I'm going to do is log in into a different account that is strong enough to complete level 16 dungeon. So it's going to check our credentials once again. So the credentials are valid. We're going to start the bot. Browser pops up, and now we're going to farm the level 16. <coughs> it has some uh, checks to see if it's in the correct page. If you're not in the correct area, it will just teleport you to the correct area and whatnot. Uh, so it works uh, well enough. So now we're in a dungeon level 16. It has two different areas, the first five enemies and the second set of five enemies. So it's going to do the first set of five enemies. After it's, after it's done, it's going to open the second set of five enemies and do all over again. And it's basically the same as a level 11 dungeon, but it has uh, more stages. So it takes longer, uh, and it's harder. So one thing to keep in mind is if your account is not strong enough to do a certain dungeon level, you're going to essentially end up in an infinite loop, because you, you will keep refreshing the page, expecting uh, the game to calculate you have enough damage to kill the, the enemy. Uh, but you will never have enough damage to kill the enemy, and you always die first. So you just keep repeating this loop indefinitely, and will never reach the end because you essentially cannot kill the enemy. So let's just wait a little bit more. So it's finishing the first set of enemies. So we'll move on into the next set of enemies really soon. Now, as you can see, we're in the second set. So it's another five enemies, and once it's done, it's just going to collect the cards and restart all over again. And one thing to mention as well is you can use your computer while it's running. I'm just leaving it here just to showcase uh, what the screen is actually doing. But you don't have to leave the screen open and uh, wait for the bot to do what it's supposed to. No, uh, this actually can run on the background. That's why you have headless here. But you can also leave the, uh, the bot running in the background while you use your computer. Uh, you can do whatever you want. You can play other games, watch videos, and whatnot. So we're getting closer to the end.
we're on the last enemy. So this is essentially the boss. And as you can see, the cards are already in the background, so we're going to collect the rewards. Uh, just have to wait for the fight to end. So the fight has finished, we collect our rewards, and essentially we're going to restart and do, all, do it all over again. So open level 16 and start farming from, from the beginning. Okay. <laughs> so now I'm going to showcase uh, the next uh, farm that is very simple, but it works very similarly. So this is essentially a, an area called Smelting Mountains in the game, and it has these five mobs. You can choose which one you want to fight. For example, let's fight the uh, Warrior of Darkness here. So it's the highest level mob in the area. And start the script. And remember, if the script gets stuck uh, in any stage, it you, you just wait uh, because the script will restart and keep farming for you. So you don't have to worry about restarting the script for yourself. Uh, so just leave the script, and if it's something goes, goes wrong, it will restart the script for yourself, and the farm will continue. So d do not worry about it. So we just entered this mountain mountains, and we're facing the highest level mob here, the Warrior of Darkness, as intended. And it's going to do the same thing. We're going to fight this guy, Check if it's dead. If it is, we're going to restart the fight. And it's going to do it indefinitely. And again, you can stop it here. So this stop button will only close the tab after you finish the, the fight and the loop has finished. Or you can brute force close it uh, by clicking on the browser X here and actually terminating the, the browser instance. Uh, it doesn't matter. So if you close the browser instance, uh, the, the main difference is that it, it might have a chance of it not closing it properly. But you can just close it here if you don't want to uh, wait until the loop ends here. And yeah. This is essentially the, the bot. You can see here we're getting some drops. And you can leave it farming wherever you like and uh, for how long you would like as well. So hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me uh, via email as our friend uh, K Fabry did. I will try to answer you uh, as quickly as possible. And if, if uh, you need an update in the macro, when I have a spare time, I will uh, try to fix it or try to implement a new, uh, a new farming instance and try to keep you updated. So. Thanks for watching once again, and hope you guys like it, enjoy it, and test it out. Download it, test it out, generate your own, uh, uh, generate your own binary or your own executable, or if you just want to download from the description below, I will provide the link. Just download it, test it out for yourself. Uh, it is useful, it is fun, and see you next time.